The world is indeed comic, but the joke is on mankind. The oldest and strongest emotion of mankind is fear, and the oldest and strongest kind of fear is fear of the unknown. Pleasure, to me, is wonder. The unexplored, the unexpected, the thing that is hidden, and the changeless thing that lurks behind superficial mutability. Almost nobody dances sober, unless they happen to be insane. From even the greatest of horrors, irony is seldom absent. That is not dead, which can eternal lie, and with strange eons, even death may die. The most merciful thing in the world, I think, is the ability of the human mind to correlate all its contents. We live on a placid island of ignorance in the midst of black seas of the infinity. And it was not meant that we should voyage far. I couldn't live a week without a private library. Indeed, I part with all my furniture and squat and sleep on the floor before I'd let go of the 1,500 or so books I possess. Someday, the piecing together of disassociated knowledge will open up such terrifying vistas of reality and of our frightful position therein that we shall either go mad from the revelation or flee from the light into the peace and safety of a new dark age. It is good to be a cynic. It is better to be a contented cat and it is best not to exist at all. Never explain anything. I know always that I am an outsider, a stranger in this century, and among those who are still men. Embody personality and individuality and self-respect the calm mastery of a being whose life is its own and not yours. And the superior person recognizes and appreciates this because he too is a free soul whose position is assured and whose only law is his own heritage and aesthetic sense. To be bitter is to attribute intent and personality to the formless, infinite, unchanging, and unchangeable void. We drift on a chartless, resistless sea. Let us sing when we can and forget the rest. I have seen the dark universe yawning, where the black planets roll without aim, where they roll in their horror unheeded, without knowledge or luster or name. If I'm mad, it is mercy. May the gods pity the man who in his callousness can remain sane to the hideous end. At night, 
when the objective world has slunk back into its cavern and left dreamers to their own. There come inspirations and capabilities impossible at any less magical and quiet hour. No one knows whether or not he is a writer unless he has tried writing at night. I never ask a man what his business is, for it never interests me. What I ask him about are his thoughts and dreams. Religion is still useful among the herd, that it helps their orderly conduct as nothing else could. The crude human animal is inexorably superstitious and there is every biological reason why they should be. Take away his Christian gods and saints, and he will worship something else. To trace the remote in the immediate, the eternal in the ephemeral, the past in the present the infinite in the finite. These are to me the springs of delight and beauty. Creative minds are uneven and the best of fabrics have their dull spots. We all know that any emotional bias irrespective of truth or falsity, can be implanted by suggestion in the emotions of the young. Hence the inherited traditions of an orthodox community are absolutely without evidential value. If religion were true, its followers would not try to bludgeon their young into an artificial conformity, but would merely insist on their unbending quest for truth irrespective of artificial backgrounds or practical consequences. With such an honest and inflexible openness to evidence, they could not fail to receive any real truth which might be manifesting itself around them. The fact that religionists do not follow this honorable course, but cheat at their game by invoking juvenile quasi-hypnosis is enough to destroy their pretensions in my eyes, even if their absurdity were not manifest in every other direction. Contrary to what you may assume, I am not a pessimist, but an indifferentist. That is, I don't make the mistake of thinking that the cosmos gives a damn one way or the other about the especial wants and ultimate welfare of mosquitoes, rats, lice, dogs, men, horses, pterodactyls, trees, fungi, dodos, or other forms of biological energy. There are not many persons who know what wonders are opened to them in the stories and visions of their youth. For when as children we learn and dream, we think but half-formed thoughts. And when as men we try to remember, we are dulled and prosaic with the poison of life. But some of us awake in the night with strange phantasms of enchanted hills and gardens, of fountains that sing in the sun of golden cliffs overhanging murmuring seas, of plains that stretch down to sleeping cities of bronze and stone, and of shadowy companies of heroes that ride caprisoned white horses along the edges of thick forest. And when we know that we have looked back through the ivory gates into that world of wonder which was ours, before we were wise and unhappy.
ultimate horror often paralyzes memory in a merciful way. In his house at Earl Ye, dead Cthulhu waits dreaming. The old ones were, the old ones are, the old ones shall be. Not in the spaces we know, but between them, they walk serene and primal, undimensioned, and to us, unseen. Unhappy is he to whom the memories of childhood bring only fear and sadness. Searchers after horror haunt strange, far places. For I have always been a seeker, a dreamer, and a ponderer on seeking and dreaming. No one horror can be more terrible than the daily torture of the commonplace. All life is only a set of pictures in the brain, among which there is no difference betwixt those born of real things and those born of inward dreamings, and no cause to value the one above the other. The sciences, each straining in its own direction, have hitherto learned us little. The appeal of the spectrally macabre is generally narrow because it demands from the reader a certain degree of imagination and a capacity for detachment from everyday life. I felt myself on the edge of the world, peering over the rim into the fathomless chaos of eternal night. I like coffee exceedingly. There are horrors beyond life's edge that we do not suspect, and once in a while, Man's evil prying calls them just within our range. Through all this horror, my cat stalked unperturbed. Once I saw him monstrously perched atop a mountain of bones and wondered at the secrets that might lie behind his yellow eyes. Memories and possibilities are even more hideous than realities. Bunched together a group of people deliberately chosen for strong religious feelings and you have a practical guarantee of dark morbidities expressed in crime, perversion and insanity. Blue, green, gray, white or black, smooth, ruffled, or mountainous, that ocean is not silent. I am so beastly tired of mankind and the world that nothing can interest me unless it contains a couple of murders on each page or deals with the horrors unnameable and unaccountable that leer down from the external universes. I have harnessed the shadows that stride from world to world to sow death and madness. Only poetry or madness could do justice to the noises.
The basis of all true cosmic horror is violation of the order of nature. And the profoundest violations are always the least concrete and describable. I have looked upon all the universe has to hold of horror, and even the skies of spring and flowers of summer must ever afterward be poison to me. All I say is that I think it is damned unlikely that anything like a central cosmic will, a spirit world, or an external survival of personality exists. They are most preposterous and unjustified of all the guesses which can be made about the universe. And I am not enough of a hair splitter to pretend that I don't regard them as errant and negligible moonshine. Do not call up that which you cannot put down. A serious adult story must be true to something in life, since Marvel tales cannot be true to the events of life. They must shift their emphasis towards something to which they can be true, namely, certain wistful or restless moods of the human spirit, wherein it seeks to weave gossamer ladders of escape from the galling tyranny of time, space, and natural law. That's because only a real artist knows the actual anatomy of the terrible or the physiology of fear. The exact sort of lines and proportions that connect up with latent instincts or hereditary memories of fright and the proper color contrasts and lighting effects to stir the dormant sense of strangeness. I remain an incurable lover of the grotesque.